So we're going to try to write some code today uh, using um, together, but we're going to try to use Replit. So I realize that um, most of you don't have access to BlueJ at home, so I'm going to do everything in Replit um, as we're doing this e-learning stuff. If you do have access to BlueJ at home, you can continue to use BlueJ, that's fine, but I want to make sure I walk through so that we can all see how to use Replit. Um, so you may have used Replit in Programming 1 and 2. Most of you have done that, but it's been a little while. So I'm going to open up a new tab, and I'm going to go to the site repl.it, and that opens up Replit. Um, I find it easiest, if you already have a Replit account, certainly use that. Um, I'm going to log in via GitHub, because that works easy for me. So I click the Login button in the upper right. I'm going to click on the GitHub icon here. Um, it's going to authenticate me, which has already been done. You may need to authorize Replit to use GitHub. Go ahead and go through those steps, and they'll bring you to like your, your starter page here. Um, I'm going to start off by making a new Replit, which is the button in the upper right corner. And I, there's a whole bunch of different languages. My favorites put Java near the top, but you can always search for it. Um, if I just start typing Java, we'll see some different options. We want to use just plain old Java for today, so I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm going to name my Replit Palindrome. Um, and then I'm going to click Create Replit. Don't import from GitHub. That would import our entire repository, which isn't going to work out well because we have a lot of different projects in there. So just create a new Replit for today. So it's creating the new Replit, booting it up. And one thing you'll notice is that it automatically creates a file called main.java. Um, my understanding is Replit always needs this file called main.java. So if our file is called something else, we'll change the name of the class to main instead. Um, we're going to work through um, the palindrome example that's already in your repository. So if you go to github.com and you go to your recursion sorting searching repository that you created on Friday, and if you were absent Friday and didn't create it, you can, you can still do that from your Chromebook. You don't need to be on the desktop computers to do so. You can still accept the GitHub Classroom assignment and all of that. I'm going to click on the folder called Palindrome Tester. Um, there's some different files in here. I'm going to click on Palindrome Tester uh, .java, and I'm going to copy and paste all this code into Replit. I find that easiest to do if I click on the raw button and then I can do Control A um, on the Chromebook or Command A like on a Mac um, and Control C or Command C again to copy everything um, and then I can switch back to Replit and replace everything here with what I've pasted in. Um, as I mentioned though we will need to change the name of the class from Palindrome Tester to Main. So I'm going to make that change there. Um, we've seen this code before. This is the code we previously did together that checks whether a string is a palindrome. Um, it does it with this, this while loop, um, which, is, which is a little bit hard to wrap our heads around. We have a couple local variables here, left, which we initialized to zero, right, which we initialized to the length of the string minus one. Our while loop condition checks both if these characters at index left and right are equal as well as if left is less than right. Inside the loop, we increment left by one and decrement right by one. Um, and then based on the outcome, we can determine if a string is a palindrome or not. At this point, we can actually run this. I can click on the Run button in Replit. Um, it will go through and, and run this for us. Um, it tells me to enter a potential palindrome. I like Taco Cat, so I'll type Taco Cat and hit Enter, and it says it is a palindrome. Okay, um, and test another palindrome, sure. Let's try Java, not a palindrome, excellent. So we're gonna change this code um, in two ways. We're gonna change this code such that it can read from a file because that can make it a lot easier to test really long palindromes, which is fun. Um, we're also gonna change this code to use a recursion because personally I think that checking for a palindrome recursively um, makes more sense conceptually than the code we, ex we currently have here, which is the iterative solution. So we're going to make several changes as we go through here for both of those. Um, 
first let's get it just to use a, um, a, a file instead. Um, and this is something that we may look into later in the course as well, but we'll just type this code together for now to actually be able to read a, a file. So we're going to need to do a couple more imports to read a file. So I'm going to do import java.io.file. That's the class that we use to actually represent a file. And I'm going to do import java.io.file not found exception, which is a certain exception that can be raised if uh, the file isn't found. Um, in our main method here, um, we only have the main method. Uh, this is where we're going to um, like open the file and read its contents and stuff. And if that file doesn't exist, an exception will be thrown. In order for this uh, to work with the Java runtime, we need to specify that it's a possibility the exception will be thrown. So I'm going to say throws file not found exception here right after the method header for the main method. Okay, That lets the Java runtime know that, hey, we might have a, a file exception going on here. Um, Let's uh, let's clean up some of this other stuff as as well. Um, okay, so we're going to create another local variable here, which will be of type string and it'll be our file name, and we're going to default that to a file name called palindrome.txt. Um, and then we're also going to change this. The we're going to do more here with the scanner as well. Um, we're accustomed to using Scanner to read from system.in, the keyboard. Uh, we have seen how we can use Scanner to read from another string. We can also use the Scanner class to read from a file. First, we need to create that file object. So I'm going to create a local variable of type file called input file. And I'm going to create a new file object. And that constructor takes one parameter, which is the path to the file name, um, which is just, or path to the file, which will just be file name in our case. And then we can change the scanner. Instead of saying system.in, we can say input file. And now we're reading from the input file instead of uh, the keyboard through the, through the terminal. Um, let's see what else. We have the do loop. We're going to leave all that alone. We'll prompt for this. We don't really need this whole like test another palindrome thing anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that code. Um, and what else do I want to get rid of? I'm also going to get rid of um, the loop here that actually Let, let's us do multiple files because we don't really need that anymore either. We'll simplify this out some, so we'll get rid of that as well. Um, so this will just run just run once. All right, so we've got the scanner here, um, but here it was prompting us to enter a palindrome. We need to now do that on our own. So let's let's write a little bit of code to do that. So we are going to say read the entire file one word at a time and concatenate tin eight each word into str. Yeah, I'll make it all one. str. There we go. Cool. What does that look like? Well, we do while s dot has next the same method we've used before to tell if there's more stuff in the input stream. And str plus equals will concatenate the next word. So if there are multiple words, this will read one word at a time. It is also best practice when we're done with a file to close it. And we do that by closing the scanner. So I'm going to do s.close to close the, the scanner. Um, just to help us out, I'm going to actually print this out before we do the palindrome stuff. So I'm going to do system.out.println, and I'm going to say just print str so I can make sure like it read it correctly. So that means we can get rid of all of this code because we're no longer going to prompt the user to 
enter a potential palindrome instead. Um, I think the rest of this should work out okay. We need to actually, however, create this file, palindrome.txt, and the way we do that is we click on the little add file icon here on the left side of Replit, we name the file palindrome.txt, and then inside this file we can put whatever palindrome we want, like race car. Cool. So, now if we run this thing, see what if I what errors I made here one error I misspelled system dot out all right well let's fix that do, 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 do. line 33 system dot out all right let's run this again and what do I have now variable string may not have been initialized oh that's true because I'm just doing it inside this loop so I'm going to initialize string to the empty string. Oh, and while I'm here, I might as well get rid of another. We're not using that anymore. I'll run this again. So many mistakes. Pretty normal. All right, race car. That string is a palindrome. Fantastic. It's working. All right, so now that we've got this basically working, let's refactor this to actually do it recursively. Um, and to make it a little bit more flexible so we can test some really long palindromes instead. Um, so we want to replace this iterative solution uh, with a recursive solution. And on Friday, one of the concepts I introduced was that of a recursive helper method. So let me pull that slide up really quick for context. Um, so here's recursive helper methods. The idea is that sometimes we need to do method decomposition to have a helper method that is conducive to being called recursively. Um, and so that's exactly what we need here, actually, because the only method we have right now is this main method. And this main method isn't set up to be called recursively because we don't really have the, um, the return value and the parameters necessary to check if something is a palindrome. So we're going to need to write a method that actually checks if a string is a palindrome. So let's write that method first, then we'll go back and refactor the main method to call it instead of do the recursive solution. So the method header is going to be public static boolean, so it's going to return true or false, is it a palindrome or not, and we're going to call it is palindrome. And it's going to take one parameter of type string called str. Cool. All right. So remember all the stuff from Friday we learned about with recursive methods. Most importantly, we must have a terminating case. Super important. What's a good terminating case? Well, if the length of the string is less than or equal to 1, then we know it's a palindrome. Um, because if there's just one character in our string, well, that's a palindrome. It's the same forwards and backwards. If there's no characters in our string, I guess that's a palindrome because it's the same forwards and backwards. So this makes a good terminating case. We'll say if str.length is less than or equal to 1, return true. Cool. Now our program won't, won't run forever. The other part we do when we solve problems recursively is we need to solve a small part of the problem. So let's do that. We're going to solve a small part of the problem. And so one way to consider solving the small part of the problem is it's certainly asking too much for us to determine if the entire string is a palindrome. But how about we just compare the very first character to the very last character, and if they're equal, it could be a palindrome, and if they're not equal, we know it's not a palindrome. So that's a good way to take a small step towards the solution. So let's create a couple of local variables, one for the first character. And I'm going to continue to use the substring method, which is good review for us. Start at index 0, go up to but not including index 1. That gets the first character. The last character, I'm going to use the substring method again. I'm going to start at string.length minus 1 up through the end of the string by only passing one parameter. That gets the last character. And then I'm simply going to check if the first character equals, i got to use the dot equals method, we're dealing with strings here, the last character. If it does, 
this is where we actually recurse. This is where we say, well, someone else can figure out the rest of the problem. So we will recurse with a simpler version of the problem. And the simpler version of the problem is going to be the string without the first and the last character that we already checked. So we're going to let someone else solve the rest of it and simply return the true or false value that that method returns. So we're going to say return is palindrome. And the simpler problem that we're going to pass along will start at the character at index 1 and go th up to but not including the length of the string minus 1. If the first and the last character are not equal, then we're done. We know it's not in the palindrome. We can simply return false. So that's what our is palindrome recursive method looks like. Wonderful. So let's go back and refactor the main method now to actually use that. All right. Um, and so where we want to change it here is all the stuff about left and right um, we're going to get rid of. So I'm going to actually delete the local variables left and right. I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff here. And I'm going to replace it with a simple check that just says if is palindrome and pass as the argument the string, if that returns true, I'm going to print this message here. That string is a palindrome. Else, I'm going to print this message here. That string is not a palindrome. And then get rid of our other checks. Let's try this out. Let's see what, uh, what mistakes I made as I wrote this code today. So I'm going to hit run again. Race car, that string is a palindrome. All right, let's test a different one. Let's change this now to um, another string. How about computer? Notice it says it's saving here. I'm going to wait till it says saved just to be safe. And then I'm going to run this again. That string is not a palindrome. Cool. Um, so this is good. We got this refactored. And personally, I think that this method is palindrome conceptually makes more sense than the iterative solution we had before. It's very easy. This is, I think, more closely mirrors what you would personally do if you were presented with a with a bunch of characters on a sheet of paper. You would look at you would like use your fingers, you'd look at the first one, you'd look at the last one, you'd see if they matched or not, and then you would like move, you know, then you would then check the next set, next set until either you were done or they didn't match. Um, so I actually think this is an example where recursive solution makes more sense conceptually. Let's add a couple other things to our code though, just because it might be fun for you to explore longer potential palindromes. So for example, if I change this palindrome text to a man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Okay. If I run this right now, it's going to say that's not a palindrome due to the punctuation and the spacing. Um, actually, technically due to the punctuation and the capitalization. So let's make this more flexible. Here's how we can do that. Um, with scanner, we can actually tell the scanner how we want it to break up the stream of characters into tokens, into quote unquote words. Um, so I'm going to add a comment here that says, we're going to make everything that isn't a letter a delimiter. A delimiter is those characters that separate tokens, those characters that separate words. And the way we do that is we call the use delimiter method on the scanner object. And we're going to pass this thing called a regular expression, which is a bit beyond the scope of this course. But if you're so inclined, check it out online. Um, and if you're really interested, send me an email and I'll send you a link to a, a regex crossword game, which is super fun. Um, but what this expression says is that everything that is not, the caret means not, 
um, a letter between capital A and Z and a letter between lowercase a and Z, we're going to consider a delimiter. And that's the set that's the set of characters we're defining, and there's going to be one or more of them for each delimiter. So that's going to get rid of all the punctuation, which is super nice. Um, the other thing we can do down here is to help us out is let's make the entire string lowercase. And we can do that by saying str equals str dot to lowercase. And that way we don't have to worry about capitalization. So if I run this, where it's going to actually, you can see how it's actually gotten rid of all the punctuation down here. It's gotten rid of all, made all the letters lowercase. And now it verifies that that string is a palindrome. Um, you can search online for some crazy long palindrome. It's amazing what's out there. Um, I think I included a, a somewhat dark and troubling palindrome um, poem inside of the folder palindrome tester. You could try that out if you want. Um, but all sorts of like uh, cool stuff you can you can try. Um, but what I truly want you to take away from this is here's an example of a recursive helper method. Um, here's an, our first example, in my opinion, of an algorithm that makes more sense to solve recursively than iteratively. And, and that's what's truly important. So hopefully you've done this with me as we've typed along. Um, all I want you to submit um, is is just a, a, I think just a link to your replet. Um, so I know that at least you have replet up and running and it's a tool we can rely upon um, throughout this e-learning time. If you did the whole thing in BlueJ instead, that's cool. Um, just send me a link to your GitHub with the uh, um, that shows that you committed the changes from today. For those of us working in Replit, um, we're not going to really worry about committing these changes. You could always copy and paste it back into GitHub.com if you if you truly want. Um, all right, that's it. I'll see you all tomorrow.